All right, JVox, hey, I just wanna say I am so glad you guys are back on YouTube with us, going live on Sunday mornings. Maybe you're watching this later, doesn't matter, because uh, I'm just excited that you're here. Uh, you know one of the things, though, that bothers me a lot in life is when you're playing a video game that has like a nasty glitch. I'm talking like get stuck in the floor, character goes flying, you get frozen into a wall, your character's running and you can't escape. I'm talking those kind of glitches. Uh, comment below if you know what I'm talking about. But uh, my son and I love to play the Lego video games. I don't know if y'all know what I'm talking about. It's like the perfect world because it's Lego. And who doesn't love Lego? Everybody loves Lego. Lego is amazing. And video games. And I love video games. I love Legos and video games. And together, Lego video games are awesome. However, there is one Lego video game that has so many glitches. It's, uh, I'm, I'm not even going to dog it. I'm not going to dog it. But uh, you know what you did. So Lego, uh, this video game, my son and I, we love to play. But it always glitches. Like we'll be playing a level and we'll be running it like perfectly. I'm a perfectionist with video games. I love to get like every coin or star or collectible. Like I play it for perfection and my son just wants to like get through. And so there will be times that we'll be playing through a level and he's just like rushing. He's cutting. He's jumping to the next cut scene before I can collect all the things. And then it kind of works out because then will run into a glitch. Like a character will get stuck on a rock and you're like trying to jump and you can't escape, right? And so the only option, there's only one option, your only option is to restart, right? The only option at that moment when you're stuck in the glitch, you're stuck in a loop, you're stuck in this place, is to restart, to reset and go back to the very beginning. And so, um, that's it. I, I just want to talk to us this morning a little bit about resetting. Because right now, everything is ruined. Everything normal is, is frustrated, right? Like there's a lot of things that aren't going to happen that may have been happening before. You know, I was, uh, I was a coach for the first time ever this past soccer season, and uh, we have no more games, right? We played, we played maybe five games or th four games, and now we're done. Season is over just like that, like the, the end of the season. Now, here's the good news. My five- and six-year-olds are undefeated. We are the champions, <laughs> all right? So, um, but I don't know, maybe you, maybe you had a sports team that, um, that their season's over. Your season is done. Maybe the, the clubs that you are a part of, right? You, they're, they may be done for the rest of the year. There's like things that, um, maybe events, maybe uh, celebrations, maybe dances, maybe some of these things that you are looking forward to that are no more, right? All of these things have been, um, have, have kind of been glitched, right? Uh, and, and so, you know, your normal routine, the way that you wake up and you brush your teeth, I hope, and you put on deodorant, I hope, and you shower, I hope, not in that order, uh, that the way that you wake up and you do things, that's all been messed up. And so, we have a chance to reset. We have a chance right now to restart. Like this week, you have a chance to restart. For most of you tomorrow, most of you watching this on a Sunday, tomorrow, you're starting online school, right? Which will be brand new. This is like a, a, a new experience for most of you, right? You're gonna be going online, but it's gonna be different. It's like everything you love about school, um, you know, like getting to hang out with friends, PE, lunch, those favorite parts are gone, and now you just get to sit and listen to your teacher, right? Um, so it's gonna be different. But this is a moment to just say, hey, it's a reset. 
It's a restart. It's something new, right? Uh, this is a chance for you to reset and restart some of the routines that are in your life. Like, I don't know if you realize this, but the things that you do every day, those are your habits, whether you are intentional about creating them or not. Maybe it's an accident that every single morning after you brush your teeth, you hop on your phone and scroll Instagram. Maybe that just happened accidentally, but it's a habit. It's something you've built into your routine. Maybe every day when you get home from school, you just walk into your room. I used to do this. Walk into your room, throw your backpack on the ground, fall face first on your bed, and take a nap. I used to do that all the time, right? And that, was, that became a habit, right? It's a routine. It's something we do over and over. But right now, this season, this moment, all of the normal is disrupted and you have a chance to reset. So what are you going to do? Like, wh what are you going to do right now? This is a chance to reset, to, to, to get rid of. Now, here's the key. Because often we have things in our lives that we're not happy about, or we're not proud of, right? Um, maybe you've got some bad habits in your life that you just keep, and they're stuck in a glitch, right? You're just stuck in this glitch and it just keeps looping and looping and looping. But right now, all your habits, all your routines, they're messed up. You have a chance to reset. Maybe there's some good habits that you have, like you, there's things that you love to do and you're, you know are good for you, but you know you can do them better and you want to use them in a different way and do them in a better way. Now's a chance to jump in. See, the Bible says this, that God works all things for the good of those who love him and are called according to his purpose. So if you're a Christian, you follow Jesus, he's the Lord of your life, you follow after God, then God's going to use everything, coronavirus pandemic, online school, time at home, he's going to use everything for your good if you let him. And so right now, chance to reset, what are you going to do? What are you going to do right now? You have a chance to restart. Hit the restart button and do some things. And so I, I want to talk about this. Um, let's sometime today make a list. Maybe you're doing it in the YouTube chat right now. I can't see. Make a list of, uh, of things that are in your life, maybe that are bad, that you know you're like, hey, I need to get this out of my life, and this is a chance to restart. And maybe... Make another list, so you've got two columns, right? On the other side, that is, hey, these are the things that I want to excel at. Now, um, as, a, a, as a person who, uh, who is a Christian, I just want to say this to you. You are a Jesus follower. You follow Jesus, which means that the habits that you want to keep, like, they want to be, you want, to, you want your habits to revolve around Jesus. That's why at our church, we say that we're, we want people to live a Christ-centered life. Like Jesus is right in the middle of your life and you live your life around it, okay? And so um, we want you to live a Christ-centered, Christ-focused life because you're a Jesus follower. So uh, there's uh, probably a ton of habits and ton of routines and ton of things that you can hit reset on, but I just want to highlight a couple real quick. Um, first of all, if you're a Jesus follower, you worship. Like maybe that's a habit, maybe that's a routine that's not part of your life right now, that worship is not. It's just something that you do on Sunday, but let me just say, worship is something that we do all the time as Christians, as Jesus followers. We honor God. We um, tell God how great he is. We tell God how awesome he is. We sing songs. Like the reason we do those songs is because it's easier for us to maybe express what we're feeling or say and worship things that we don't uh, know we should feel yet. And so we worship and we sing. And so find some worship songs. Maybe, maybe part of your new routine is like two songs every morning before you start your day. You put two songs of worship on, you honor God in your room, and you like worship. Maybe you gotta do it like quiet. Like maybe you turn on your bathroom fan so nobody in your house hears you, and they just think you're like going to the bathroom really bad, but you're just worshiping God, right? At the top of your voice. And um, so worship, Christians, you're a Jesus follower, 
We worship. That's a good habit to build in. We also pray, right? Maybe that's something that you, you relegate to like um, right before you eat food. But man, the Bible says that Christians pray constantly. That means that you can be praying at random points. I, there's a friend of mine who I don't even know when she starts praying sometimes. Like we'll be in a conversation and then she'll just be talking and, and all of a sudden she'll be like, oh, and dear God. And I'm like, oh, we're praying. Okay. Uh-huh. Right? Like she just constantly has an ongoing prayer conversation with God throughout her day. And so I just want to encourage you. Maybe you want to make prayer a bigger part of your life right now and you're just hitting reset on the way you've been praying, do it. Pray more. And this last one, we live the Bible. Not that we just read the Bible. Man, and I want you guys to read the Bible. We post a Bible reading plan every week if you're in JVox that you can check out. You can read through the Bible just so you know what to read because sometimes we're confused. Like, what what am I supposed to read in the Bible? But but not only do we read it, the Bible says that... uh, We should live the Bible, not just hear it, not just read it, that we actually do what it says, which is why I love to do what's called soap, because every single day when I read the Bible, I write something that stuck out to me, but I also write, how do I apply this to my life, right? Which is um, so helpful because it forces me to think of ways that I can live the Bible and not just hear it. And so... um, I I just want to echo again that you are, you are a Jesus follower and a Jesus follower does Jesus habits, does Jesus routines. And right now you have a chance to hit reset and start over. So today, what are you going to do? What are you going to do? Are you going to take this moment, this chance right now where everything is disrupted and just hit the big reset button. I, I want to pray together. So, uh, so why don't you um, step away from the chat real quick uh, and, and begin to just um, maybe get on, the, uh, on your floor, maybe get on your knees to pray, maybe, um, you know, maybe uh, sit down if you're standing, whatever you need to do to get into a posture that helps you pray. Let's pray. I want to read this verse over you. Lamentations 3, Jeremiah prayed this to God. He said, Peace has been stripped away, and I've forgotten what prosperity is. So I cry out, My splendor is gone. Everything I had hoped for from the Lord is lost. He was honest with God when he prayed, and so we're going to take a couple seconds here. And think about some of the things maybe that have been disrupted in this season. Some of the things maybe that you were even looking forward to. Maybe games, maybe uh, events, maybe times with friends or family. Um, What are those things? Think about those. I just want you to know God knows all of those things. And he promises this to us in Romans 8. We know that God causes everything to work together for the good of those who love God and are called according to his purpose. I love that. It says that for you, if you trust God's plan, even when it's uncomfortable, God's going to take those moments and and do something incredible with them. So here's what I want you to do right now. Let's take another 15 seconds, and I just want you to tell God that you trust Him, even though you don't understand maybe everything that's going on there. Tell God that you trust Him. Jeremiah says this right after that verse in Lamentations 3. I still dare to hope when I remember this. The faithful love of the Lord never ends. His mercies never cease.
tell you right now, some things haven't changed. Because if you're a Christian, God's love for you doesn't change just because coronavirus is going on. It doesn't change just because you're stuck in your house. It doesn't change because uh, of any of that. If you're a Christian, all of your sin are forgiven. And that doesn't change right now. So you just take a moment real quick. Can you just thank God for his love and his continuing mercy over you? Pray that to him. God's faithfulness, His mercies begin afresh each morning. New mercy means that today is a brand new chance for you to start over. Today is a reset. So if there's some things in your life that you want to reset today, let's take a moment and just tell God, pray to Him what those things are and tell Him that you need His help. pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Well, Jbox, I am so glad that you got to be a part of this today. I pray that um, you're blessed by this, and I can't wait to see you next time. Peace out.